<sighs> oh, let me get this together. <sighs> Throughout the years, I've heard many people speak about mocking false prophets. And one of the go-to examples for mocking false prophets is from 1 Kings 18, where Elijah, the prophet of the Lord, challenged the prophet of Baal to a showdown on Mount Carmel. And not only did Elijah mock the prophets, he also mocked their God, Baal. But a couple of things about the story. In 1 Kings 18, it starts off by letting us know the word of the Lord came to Elijah and told him to show himself to Ahab. So what he got into was because the Lord sent him. That's a game changer. So him mocking the prophets of Baal, okay, they called for fire, didn't get any. He called for fire. And he got support from the Most High God. So far, so good. Then he had those 450 false prophets executed. And for many people, that's where the story ends. Elijah mocked the false prophets and their God. Hmm. But whose table did those false prophets sit at? Jezebel. Now this is not to incite fear, but it's a little about common sense. And as is written in Romans 8.14, those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. See, the Lord has a responsibility where if He sends you into battle. If you go into a battle that He didn't send you in, then you may find yourself like King Jehoshaphat of Judah, who went into a battle with Ahab at Ramoth Gilead, a battle the Lord was going to use to wipe Ahab off the face of the earth. And in a moment of distress, with death knocking at his door, Jehoshaphat had to call upon the Lord for help. And the Lord graciously helped him. But later on, the Lord rebuked the king of Judah, for aligning himself with those who are opposed to him. So back to Elijah. The Lord sent him to present himself to Ahab. He challenged the prophets of Baal. He mocked them and their God. And their God, by the way, is a demon. Huh. But is that how the story ends? With him mocking the prophets of Baal and getting away with it. It continues about him hearing the sound of rain, him telling Ahab to get to Jezreel. But then Ahab, the king of Israel, went and told his wife, Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, what had happened. Now, do you think that was like a Revival on Mount Carmel, where Elijah told people, Choose which God they will serve. If Baal be God, then serve him. If Yahweh be God, then serve him. Do you think she rejoiced regarding what happened to her prophets? Do you think she was amused by his mocking? Because the story continues in 1 Kings 19, where she sent a message to Elijah. <sighs> swearing in the name of her gods that she's going to take his life or have his life taken within 24 hours. Elijah, the man who called down fire on Mount Carmel. Elijah, the man who later on in 2 Kings 1 called down fire that consumed a captain and his 50 men of King Ahaziah. And he did it twice, so it wasn't a fluke, it wasn't a mistake. 
He would have done it a third time except an angel of the Lord told him to go with the captain who had actually bowed himself down to Elijah. So Elijah, calling down fire from heaven, he mocked the prophets of Baal. He mocked Baal. But then Jezebel, when she heard the message she sent to Elijah caused him to run for his life. So there are many people speaking about mocking false prophets. If you're going to do it, ensure the Lord is with you. Because you may do it to a low-level false prophet and don't get any backlash. But there are rankings in the kingdom of darkness, just like there is in God's kingdom. And even though you as a child of God may think they can do stuff and get away with it, Jesus, the Son of God, he ended up facing the devil himself. But starting with that, whether Matthew 4 or Luke 4, it was the Holy Spirit who led him into the wilderness to be tempted off by the devil. Because there's some people, they're enduring warfare, or maybe have endured it, and it's something that was avoidable if they basically had chosen their battle because not every battle is yours. So Elijah, yes, he mocked the prophets of Baal and Baal and for a short while got away with it. When he came to Jezebel, you know in Revelation 2 how the Lord spoke about Jezebel, the woman who calls herself a prophetess and how he gave her time to repent but she re refused. She refused to repent. There are some who are sold out to the devil. Hardened tactics. Some who you mess with or they'll show up in your dreams. You may wake up thinking it was only a dream but they knew exactly what was going on the moment it was happening because they have some demonic powers, some skills that you don't. It's one thing for the Lord sends you into the battle but it's another thing if you took a fight up on your own because the Lord may allow it to teach you a lesson that just because you're a child of God hmm. as I was saying this I was reminded of this BBC special with a lion I believe it was called Red the lion the quote unquote king of the jungle he wandered into hyena territory and next thing you know he was surrounded by about 20 hyenas and slowly, they were wearing him down. His life was hanging in the balance. Until a member of his pride, another lion, showed up and helped him out. So as a child of God, the lion from tribe of Judah, you may be a young lion yourself. You may be able to do a lot. But be careful about going into the enemy's territory. Territory. Because you may find yourself in a battle there's more than you can handle and the Lord may allow you to get nipped a few times you seriously hurt to teach you some lessons Hebrews 5 8 it speaks about Jesus even though a son he learned obedience through the things which he suffered we can learn obedience through the things that we suffer Paul wrote about it about handing people over to Satan, also John, about handing people over to Satan for destruction to your flesh so their spirit may be saved. Now what they did to get that kind of punishment? One was incest, adultery. To others, blasphemy. But still, even the devil is an instrument of the Lord against the children of disobedience and we too can fall into hands and have to deal with some stuff that we would have never imagined even as children of God so when you use scriptures to do things ensure you have the full context and also other co-text regarding what the Lord may allow you as his child to go through so that you like that lion you, in a sense, like as a lion, 
you may be able to handle 10 hyenas. But if you go against 11, then you start running into problems. 20, serious problems. And the enemy, kind of like how lions or pack hunters, they hunt in a pride. Hyenas, they travel in a group called a clan. So the enemy, he also likes ganging upon people. We don't know how the man at the Gadarenes was demonized, but he ended up having a legion of demons. They were wearing him out, trying to wear him down. So before you start thinking about mocking even false prophets because Elijah did it, you're a child of God, but you're not Elijah. Before you start trying to mock false prophets, ensure the Lord is with you and he's supportive of your actions. Because it may be fine mocking the 450 false prophets. When you come against Jezebel, things may be different. Remember, Elijah, the man was calling down fire upon Mount Carmel. The next moment he was running for his life. It is important to have all the facts, or as you may find yourself, in warfare you're never called to. Some people, they're built for battle. What they can take, you can't, because of how the Lord has equipped them. And of course, when the Lord sends you to something, He'll be there with you. Sometimes, as it is written, the Lord withdrew Himself from King Hezekiah to test what was in His heart. So sometimes the Lord may withdraw Himself from you. Not to say that He's left you, but he's allowed some room between the two of you. And when there's room between the two of you, it allows the enemy more freedom of maneuver. So be careful about using scriptures that may open doors to things that you truly aren't ready for. And the Lord may allow you to experience it, to show you what is possible, and also to teach you to remain submitted to the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. So I pray this message blesses you. And again, before we start mocking false prophets like Elijah did, remember what happened when Jezebel <laughs> rebelled, when Jezebel stood up and threatened his life. And Jezebel had made a business, a sport of killing the Lord's prophets. So what she said, she meant and she was capable of doing. And yes, there's some people who came out of the dark arts and they were pretty high up in the occult. And I can probably tell you some things that blow your mind. Things that you would think is possible. They know. Also remember Acts 19, the sons of Sceva, the exorcist, want to cast out demons in the name of Jesus. Jesus who Paul knows. But the devils were like, um, Jesus we know, and Paul we know, but who are you? And those devils beat them down. There are different levels of devils. Daniel had prayed. 21 days later, or after 21 days, the angel showed up to let him know he was in a battle with the prince of Persia an evil principality. It is important to know what you're messing with and not simply because you're a child of God. Jesus suffered things as a son of God and the Lord may allow you to get touched <laughs> so you learn some lessons regarding warfare. So when you cite or anyone cites 1 Kings 18 as a reason to mock prophets, keep going all the way down to 1 Kings 19. <laughs> know your enemy and do not let your enemy know you better than you do. I pray this message blesses you. God bless you and Jesus the Christ. Even though he may, he may allow you to get touched, kind of like Job, <laughs> even though he allows you to get touched, he is still Lord. So again, Jesus the Christ is Lord.